We start with an escalation in Israel's campaign to destroy Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that Israeli troops are now operating inside Gaza City. He also says there will be no fuel deliveries and no ceasefire until Hamas releases the more than 200 hostages that it captured today, one month ago, on October 7th. But the home the fighting in the south is advancing with a force that Hamas hasn't known. Gaza City is encircled. We are operating in it and deepening the pressure on Hamas every hour, every day. So far, we have killed thousands of terrorists above the ground and under the ground. There will be no entry of fuel, no entry of workers, and there will be no ceasefire without the release of our hostages. Netanyahu has also signaled that Israel will manage security in Gaza after it eliminates Hamas, but that difficult urban combat lies ahead. After a month of constant bombardment, Israel's military says ground troops are pushing into Gaza City in the northern part of the Strip and taken over a Hamas compound. As soldiers prepare to attack fighters hiding in underground tunnels. For the first time, Israel's prime minister has also provided insight into his government's future plans for the territory during a U.S. television interview. President Biden has said that it would be a mistake for Israel to occupy Gaza. Who should govern Gaza when this is over? Uh, I think Israel will, for uh, an indefinite period, will have the overall uh, security responsibility because we've seen what happens when we don't have it. When we don't have that security responsibility, what we have is the eruption of uh, Hamas terror on a scale that we couldn't imagine. Weeks of pounding airstrikes have reduced entire neighborhoods to rubble. Israeli ground forces have effectively cut the strip in half as fighting intensifies in the north. Netanyahu says Israel is considering tactical pauses to facilitate the entry of humanitarian aid and the exit of hostages. Israel has rebuffed mounting international pressure for a ceasefire. Now, one of the functions of cordoning off that the northern Gaza area into the northern sector of operations, is to seal off Hamas leadership and, of course, personnel who are already there and kill them, or capture them, I suppose, in some cases. Military analysts warn that the weeks ahead will see gruelling house-to-house -house fighting in Gaza. For this latest phase, Israel has put its elite 36th Division to the task. But the 36th Division has combat power equivalent to the British Army. So that when you see those pictures of these awe-inspiring, shock and awe barrages, not only from the air and artillery, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the power of a large, modern, well-equipped army and its most powerful division about to go into action. Israel withdrew its troops and settlers from Gaza in 2005, but kept control over the territory's airspace and coastline. Netanyahu did not make clear what security control of the Strip would look like. U.S. officials have advised Israel not to reoccupy Gaza. And I'm now joined by Roy Kibrick. He's a director of the director of research at Midvim. That's the Israeli Institute for Regional Foreign Policies in Jerusalem. Roy, what do you make of Netanyahu's remarks about taking responsibility for the overall security of Gaza? What does that mean? Well, it means that he continues to choose um, his own long-standing strategy of managing the conflict. Look, we have only re two realistic alternatives to the question of who will control Gaza. Either it would be an ongoing Israeli occupation, which includes the continued existence of Hamas. It's an ongoing warfare. Mm. It is a um, continued managing the conflict. Or there's another alternative that a moderate Palestinian entity that recognizes Israel and provides security, peace, and prosperity for both Israel and Palestine citizens. So we have two alternatives. What Netanyahu suggests is to choose to continue his prolonged strategy of managing the conflict. Mm. And 
if you want to ask me why, I can explain why. Uh, I have another question. What about, what, what about the civil governance of Gaza? I mean, Hamas has done that to a degree. Uh, can and will Israel provide that too? Well, no. It, it, it doesn't want to do that. It wants to control it or to try to depict or to replicate what's happening in the West Bank to Gaza. Uh, but in the West Bank, you have an entity, the Palestinian Authority, who uh, cooperate with you uh, and manage the civil, uh, civil life of the citizens in the West Bank. You don't have that in Gaza. So, or you continue to fight Hamas, who will continue to manage the civil uh, aspects of, of life in Gaza. This is what Netanyahu actually uh, proposed. Mm. Continue but managing the conflict. Or you choose the alternative and work hard, work hard to build an alternative in Gaza, a Palestinian one. Mm. How credible will that be? Well, it, it will be a Palestinian government put in place, if you will, uh, uh, by Israel. Does it have any credibility? It, there's no credibility of such, meaning there's no Palestinian entity who would enter Gaza and take responsibility over what's happening in Gaza, um, escorting by, by the IDF. The only way, an alternative to Hamas, the only way to eradicate Hamas is to build a credible Palestinian authority there, is by providing it with an asset, meaning with a state, a Palestinian recognized state. And this is exactly why Netanyahu wouldn't choose that. Because if we want, for example, the Palestinian Authority to take responsibility over Gaza, it would be ready to do that if it comes with a state, a recognized state. And for that, Israel should need to um, compromise in the West Bank. It means at the end that Netanyahu's government would fall because it, comprom it comprised out of the settlers' movement and the fundamentalist uh, religious parts of Israel. So if he need to choose Netanyahu between continuing managing, managing the conflict with the IDF in Gaza or compromising the West Bank and choose a two-state solution, provide a Palestinian state, but losing his tenure, then he would choose himself, mm. unfortunately. Rory Kibrick there, he Director has, we, of Research at Midvim, the Israeli Institute for Regional Foreign Policies in Jerusalem. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Well, earlier, I spoke with Eran Lerman. He spent many years inside Israeli intelligence. He also served on Israel's National Security Council under Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I asked him whether Israel's soldiers are now fighting Hamas above ground or in the terrorist tunnels below. Well, it's both. Um, it's the bulk of the Gaza area, city area is now uh, cut off from all directions. Progress is very slow, systematic, and um, designed basically to find and destroy the tunnel entrances, as well as basically destroy Hamas positions and Hamas forces, and create the conditions under which their command structure will be destroyed um, step by step. Uh, the IDF is uh, trying to fight quite carefully. Uh, the, uh, there is a humanitarian corridor still open for the people in the combat area to clear out uh, mm -hmm. in the direction of the south. But this is uh, um, the most complex form of warfare imaginable in, uh, in a densely populated area. And, uh, and uh, therefore, it's being take, uh, done in a very, uh, I would say, uh, measured pace mm -hmm. um, and in, with close cooperation between the, uh, uh, the armored formations, the infantry, air force support, artillery, all the elements being brought to bear uh, in, this, uh, in this battle. Mr. Lerman, let me um, get, if I could, your read on what has been said in just the last 24 hours. Um, the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, saying that Israel will have overall security responsibility in Gaza indefinitely. 
But we heard just this evening the defense minister, Gallant, saying that neither Israel nor Hamas will govern Gaza after the war. Is that a contradiction in your opinion? Not necessarily. When we speak about uh, uh, security responsibility, it means that we are going to retain the right to prevent the emergence of any threat from Gaza uh, for the indefinite future. That doesn't necessarily entail governance. We have a reality now where we act uh, in, for a similar purpose in areas under Palestinian Authority control in, uh, in the West Bank. And, and uh, we don't govern these areas, but we do operate there to, to ensure that they do not constitute a threat. Ultimately, there the is certainly not, in the, no intention, I believe, in, uh, on the part of the Israeli government to actually govern uh, Gaza. Um, but there are going to have to be uh, security arrangements put in. And for the time being, it's indefinite in time because we have not yet had anyone coming up saying very clearly uh, what is the, the, uh, the plan. The Palestinian Authority is uh, simply incapable of taking over. It is too weak, corrupt, and, and has failed in governance even in the areas under its direct control. So to, the, mm. the, the mission in Gaza is beyond their capacity. Well, what, the United what, Nations says the Russians and the Chinese, uh, we're not going to go with a UN mission. So we need an alternative and it needs time and, and, and effort to work out with our American and, and other friends uh, how to go about it in a way which would be useful for a better future for the Palestinians in Gaza and for ourselves. We heard again today from the Defense Minister Gallant that um, the, there will be no humanitarian pauses in this campaign until all of the hostages have been released. I mean, th with that in mind, th the idea of getting all of these hostages brought home, does that limit the scope of action that the Israeli military has in Gaza? Well, uh, right now the government is operating on the uh, opposite assumption, namely that the, uh, uh, if we relent in terms of uh, our military pressure, Hamas will certainly play indefinitely for time. And we have seen them uh, uh, drag us for years in negotiations over two individuals who, who they hold to do uh, a demented person who crossed over to Gaza and a Bedouin boy and, uh, and the bodies of two of our soldiers. So we know their tactics. We have no uh, doubt that if we simply say, OK, now we settle now, we stop the fighting and we settle to negotiate, it will be years before we see the uh, hostages released. So the need for the intense pressure, both in terms of military operations and in terms of the... Uh, um, constraints, obviously, on humanitarian aid. No Israeli family understands how it can be that a child of three is held without access to the Red Cross, and Israel is providing humanitarian corridors into Gaza. We are doing this uh, uh, basically out of respect to the opinions of others internationally, but uh, it is not the, the government, it's the people of Israel who are asking this question. How can this possibly be that mm -hmm. they are holding babies and children without any access to inf even to information and we are providing humanitarian aid? Yeah, Mr. Let me, let me ask you one question before we run out of time. We know that there have been members of the, the military who have admitted to making mistakes or decisions that did not work that may have led no to security breaches um, on October 7th. We have not heard a mea culpa coming from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Tonight, there's a rally in Jerusalem, people calling for the Prime Minister to resign. Should he say that he was part of the security weakness? Well, I believe that, uh, first of all, um, he has already said that he would also have to answer uh, to what happened. I believe that uh, if he fails to take full responsibility uh, in person, uh, there is bound to be a, a commission of inquiry uh, at the, uh, what we call uh, at the national level, not at the governmental level, mm -hmm. that is to say an independent 
commission led by a, a Supreme Court uh, judge, the way we've seen these uh, uh, option, this option taken mm-hmm. in 73 and again in 82 and again after the second Lebanon war. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and um, I think this will also have a deep political impact. Even people close to Netanyahu now concede that we're going to have a complete, uh, completely new political field once the war is over. Mr. Aaron Lehmann, with the Jerusalem Institute for Strategy and Security, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight, and we appreciate your valuable insights. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, my next guest is Asaf Ordeon. He's a former brigadier general in the Israel Defense Force from 2010 to 2015. He served as head of strategic division in the IDF General Staff's Planning Directorate, and he's currently with the think tank, the Institute for National Security Studies. He joins me tonight from Tel Aviv. General, it's good to have you with us. The IDF has now divided the Gaza Strip in two. Is the next step the complete capture of Gaza City? I think uh, what we uh, need to expect is the further uh, infighting uh, inside uh, Gaza, which is the center of gravity of the terrorist uh, Hamas uh, army and governance in Gaza. So what what we are seeing now is like closing in on uh, the city of uh, Gaza and uh, fighting against uh, the core of Hamas forces uh, in that area. Do you anticipate the IDF moving into the southern part of Gaza? Uh, We need to uh, see how uh, the campaign uh, develops, but uh, this uh, might uh, well be part of the future phases uh, as our uh, leadership uh, will assess the situation of the enemy and uh, the need to further degrade and defeat it. I'd like if you could, maybe to help our viewers understand, what do people need to know about how fundamentally Israel intends to reshape Gaza? Um, and, And how long is Israel prepared to take doing that? I know it, uh, it sounds a bit, uh, you know, distant in a sense, but uh, it will, uh, we will do it as long as it takes. Because uh, after the uh, October 7th uh, massacre, uh, I think we are talking about an Israel transformed. Uh, it is lo- no longer uh, willing uh, to accept a, a terror government in, uh, in Gaza. Uh, being able to slaughter our uh, uh, people, our communities, uh, to hijack and kidnap uh, hostages, babies, toddlers, uh, women, elderly, Mm. Holocaust survivors, all of this, and to hold uh, 240 of them in Gaza as hostages. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, We just uh, half an hour ago, we got the evening... Uh, salvo into the Tel Aviv metropolitan area uh, by uh, rockets. Uh, We've tried for many years to deter and somewhat uh, degrade, but uh, on on the whole tolerate the concept of uh, Hamas uh, terror government in Gaza, thinking that it's the least of all evils. No, it's not the least. It's as evil as Daesh and uh, ISIS and maybe worse. Uh, the barbaric and sadist uh, uh, hyenas crimes and atrocities are not something that uh, we're going to accept. And under never again, we are willing to pay the price and take as long as it takes uh, our time and efforts and our uh, soldiers' uh, uh, casualties and, and so on to remove this uh, threat to our border communities and to Israel at large. General, you, you say that um, there was a time when you thought that Hamas was maybe the lesser of evils, um, and you say it's not. It's just as bad as, as ISIS. Are you pointing the finger at your prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu? Is he guilty of allowing Hamas to fester as long as it apparently has? Uh, Israel uh, faced a wicked uh, choice between uh, going into Gaza as we now do, 
or trying to deter and some somehow uh, uh, you know get to terms uh, arrive at some terms with uh, Hamas which live which allow uh, coexistence you know the mixture uh, between sufficient uh, military action uh, economic uh, relief measures just mm -hmm. uh, weeks before uh, the hyenas attack uh, we actually approved more working uh, permits for Gazans in Israel yeah. I think uh, that uh, that Saturday, uh, put all those uh, uh, concepts to sleep. So we need to change our paradigm. We need to recognize the enemy uh, that we are facing. And we need to uh, act appropriately if we want to live here as a democracy and our uh, communities must be safe and not to wake up uh, with, with a pogrom of uh, jihadis uh, at their uh, doorstep and, and that they're the doors of their safe rooms. And General, I, I know you're a military man, but let me just ask you about politics, if you will, for a second. You say we need to change the paradigm. Does that mean, does Israel need to change its government, change its prime minister, change of leadership? Um, most of our uh, defense and intelligence uh, leadership already claimed responsibility, uh, which means that uh, in due time, as the war uh, subsides, they will probably step down. What about uh, the prime minister? Yet to we have yet to hear it from our uh, prime minister, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that in, in a vibrant democracy like ours, uh, the public will demand its its uh, answers, mm -hmm. and it will also pass its verdict mm -hmm. on, on the leadership uh, responsibility and accountability of that national-level unprecedented catastrophe. Today, the Israeli Defense Minister, Gallant, said that there will be no humanitarian pauses in this campaign until all hostages have been released. To what extent do the hostages constrain the military's scope of action? Uh, it's a very high priority uh, goal for us uh, to free them, to bring about their uh, release and to repatriate them uh, back uh, back home. There are full families there, uh, Jews, Arabs, uh, uh, foreigners of, of uh, various nations, and we want them, we want them back. There are naturally, uh, a, let, let's say, a complex situation in which the military pressure uh, helps to apply uh, pressure to the decision makers in Gaza. But at the same time, there's also the operational risk. And uh, Hamas likes very much to uh, 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 taunt us and say, OK, your air uh, strikes have, have just killed dozens of your own hostages. Mm -hmm. That's part of the psychological wa warfare uh, we are facing. Uh, this, this is a part and parcel of being a, a terrible uh, uh, terror organization governing uh, a piece of land uh, on our border. Let me ask you, uh, for the, the period after the, the fighting has ended, um, after Hamas as a military arm has, has been destroyed, that's the stated goal here, you know, there remains, of course, the battle for the hearts and minds of Palestinians in the territory, as well as in the West Bank. Uh, to what extent can Israel defang the, the ideology underpinning Hamas among Palestinians? Israel can uh, defang this uh, snake from its uh, uh, poisonous uh, uh, teeth, which are the military side or the military capabilities and the government capabilities. Uh, it's not for Israel uh, to compete on ideology. This is intra-Palestinian issue. Uh, in, in many aspects, both part of, uh, of the Palestinian theater uh, suffer from uh, a leadership crisis, both uh, the PA in the West Bank and Hamas in Gaza uh, suffer a crisis of legitimacy. Mm -hmm. And they each uh, survive in its own way. But if we want to de-radicalize or to bring a genuine non-jihadi uh, ideology to the forefront with the Palestinian society, this is for the Palestinians themselves uh, to work out probably with some uh, help uh, of their uh, uh, regional uh, supporters and our own uh, regional mm -hmm. partners. 
uh, both the peace uh, treaty countries, Jordan and Egypt, and also the uh, Abraham Accords uh, countries, and maybe in the near future also Saudi Arabia. General, before we run out of time, let me ask you, I know you've, you've seen the pro-Palestinian demonstrations that have taken place in cities um, around the world, mainly in North America and here in Europe. There are calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. Those calls are growing, getting louder. Israel seems to be losing sympathy on the global stage. How concerned are you about this? It's uh, concerning, but we need to uh, remind ourselves of what at stake uh, right now. It, it uh, would be better uh, for the uh, publics in other countries, friendly countries, to be better informed, not to uh, get uh, along this from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, or should I say Jewish free, you know, mm. Jews free, I don't want to translate it into German. Mm. Uh, but we understand the uh, exterminational uh, aspect of what Hamas is seeking to do. It's saddening to see that so-called liberals and progressive uh, uh, crowds are going after this uh, uh, pipe dream, which seems to be all about uh, liberation and freedom, but it's all about genocide and, and uh, ethnic uh, cleansing of uh, Jews in Israel. General Asaf Orion, we appreciate you taking the time to talk with us tonight. Please come back and talk with us again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.